One of my favorite places in Pinellas County is the Fort DeSoto Arrowhead picnic area. When you visit the picnic area, you're going to want to park down at the water's edge and backtrack a little bit to the trail. When you take the trail, you'll see all kinds of uh, maritime forests moving into scrub, transitioning. Uh, I want you to go left and uh, take it to the water's edge. Then you can walk right to the water and into the flats. Uh, make a lot of observations, take a lot of pictures. You're gonna get wet. You won't go more than waist deep, so your camera should be safe. Uh, make sure you empty your pockets though. You know, don't bring your phone in your pocket or if you got one of those fancy keys, uh, make sure that you uh, take precautions to keep it out of the water uh, because a lot of the cool things you'll see are in the water. Now, uh, I'm gonna give you a tour of this uh, area and it's going to include uh, a lot of the sayings that we've done, the hikes that we've done. Uh, so you're going to see a lot of what lives there. So on the trail, uh, you can see some crustose lichen growing on uh, rocks. That's a little different from the reindeer moss, but it's both lichens. It's crustose lichen. It's an algae and a fungus. Uh, you can see below that uh, a lot of pine, a lot of pines. You can go through the pine forest. Uh, you got live oak. Uh, there'll be cactuses. That's our prickly pear and the epiphytic air plant right there. Uh, there's another epiphyte, the bromeliad, uh, and some wax myrtle. You have both sawtooth and smooth palmettos, plenty of cedars. Uh, you have a lot of uh, ferns. Different ferns, swamp ferns, giant leather ferns. Uh, and also, unfortunately, uh, you can see that there's Brazilian pepper as well. Uh, as you get toward the water, you'll start to see more aquatic things show up. Uh, you can see the uh, fiddler crabs, male, one, one large claw for display. And a lot of their burrows with the little uh, balls of poo around it. Uh, carapace of the horseshoe crab must have been dragged up. Uh, usually it's a molt. You won't find the, the horseshoe crab, you'll just find its uh, carapace. Railroad vine with the morning glory. Uh, you can see that, that water there was, was after uh, a high tide. So it flooded right up on the, on the shores. Uh, white mangrove, you can basically make out the nectaries right there. Two little bumps on the petiole. And uh, then the, the fern growing on the live oak is really cool. It's called the resurrection fern. Uh, when it dies, it's brown, it just it's, it, it looks, looks gone. Then you rehydrate it and it kind of comes back to life. Resurrection uh, and sporulates. So it's inactive and then it gets wet and it, it grows. So it kind of lives there uh, on these trees as an epiphyte. Uh, another of another, uh, the uh, fiddler crabs, uh, some poison ivy, lots of it, the burrow, the live oak, we've already uh, touched upon that. Uh, at the trail's edge, you'll see a little bit of the uh, Spanish bayonet, Spanish bayonet, uh, very sharp, don't touch. And uh, one of my students uh, overcoming her fear of crustaceans. The mangroves, when you get to the, the water's edge, you can see uh, we have the white mangroves tattered around leaves. Uh, we also have some salt marsh there. This was during the winter, so it wasn't as uh, flourishing. It just depends on the season and the tides. Mud flats uh, abutting it. Then uh, you got the black mangroves, black mangrove, uh, some sparse shoal grass. Again, the seasons, uh, during the winter, it's not as active. Uh, there's a quahog clam and the snail eggs of the uh, lightning whelk, lightning whelk snail eggs. Uh, some seagrass, uh, turtle grass in the upper, uh, it, it's dead, but you can see it's a little thicker. You have an auger below that. Uh, cool, anemone in the middle, that's a sea anemone. They, uh, you can see them when, in the winter when, when we've died back a bit, but then they'll be just part of the, uh, the grass in the summer. Some glass minnows below that, just um, 
a school of glass minnows, uh, crowns conch, crown conch, upper right, and then a sea slug, uh, extreme right, that's a shellless snail, uh, gastropod. Then you have the uh, banded tulip below that, and the left-handed lightning whelk with a few barnacles growing on it. A uh, nice wood stork uh, watching us from some of the live oaks. Uh, next to that, you have the uh, propagules of a black mangrove, and then you have a living lightning whelk, predatory snail. You can see its operculum is its uh, covering when it closes in its trap door, and it's coming part way out, so you can see its uh, dark body. Uh, below that, you have sargassum. Sargassum is a uh, gulf weed. It's our brown algae. It's very important. It forms huge floating mats. It's called the weed line. It's where baby sea turtles uh, swim out to the weed line and spend their years out in the ocean in these huge habitats, these floating mats of uh, brown algae. And you have some red mangroves taking root in the mudflat there, the next generation of mangrove forests. Uh, right off the flats, pulled up by my, uh, with hands, uh, crown conch, upper right, down below that, the pear whelk, below that, the sunray venus, venus is a genus of clams, uh, next to that, the left-handed operculum of the lightning whelk, some oyster, uh, above the oyster, lightning whelk again, it got its name from the, the lines, a propagule above that, the red mangrove taking root in a mud area, and a Florida fighting conch encrusted with barnacles uh, in the upper center. You have some sea pork or tunicates, tunicates in the uh, upper left. They are in phylum chordata. Their larvae resemble fish, but when they settle down, uh, they basically are filter feeders. Uh, below that, you have some ibises foraging in the uh, tree line. Next to that, you have a hermit crab in a banded tulip eating a banded tulip. Hmm. And then above that, you have uh, the small little uh, crabs. Uh, remember, their larvae are zoea. They're miroplankton, and then when they get a little bigger, they settle down and they, they hide in the cracks and crevices until they uh, molt out and, and, and become uh, adult. Brittle stars, that's cool, brittle star. And below that, a crown conch with a hermit crab. You have sea star, phylum Macatodermata. Uh, and then a couple more hermit crabs uh, in the banded tulips. These are common snails, the banded tulips, the crown conch. When you're walking the flats, you should be able to pull a bunch of them up, as well as the uh, lightning whelk. Ooh, ooh, egg casings. Egg casings in the upper uh, left, egg case. Below that, you have the sand dollar. Uh, looks to me like you've got a little entromorpha, a green algae growing on some oysters. The blue-eyed scallop in the middle, indicating clean water. Those little eye spots uh, help, help help escape predation. They're blue. And uh, the blue crab. Uh, below that, you should see them sidling through your uh, seagrass beds when you're there. Blue crabs. Uh, barnacles and limpets attached to the seawall. A really nice shot of a sea slug below that. Uh, another half-decent shot of the sea anemone. And above that, you have a tunicate. Tunicate, again, Larva resembles a fish, chordata, settles down, becomes a filter feeder, and is living on a piece of turtle grass. Uh, another blue crab. Now those seagrass beds, they get thick, and uh, you can see the prop scar through it, and that won't heal for, for years to come. Some more sea pork. Above that, you have a male, male, called a jimmy, a male crab. Uh, you can tell it's male because the plate, its uh, genital plate, uh, is, is rather phallic. Female is a big triangle, and a male kind of looks like uh, you know what. Uh, some horseshoe crabs mating and a stingray, so make sure you're shuffling. Uh, more snail eggs. You got the tulip eggs laid right on top of the 
um, lightning whelk eggs. So they're competing for space out there. The most common fish, there is a anchovy, bay anchovy, glass minnow anchovy. You can tell it's an anchovy, not a silver slide by the slope forehead, but they're both uh, very similar. Uh, other things that we've pulled up, uh, you have a bottom dweller, right there, a dermosil fish. You can see its eyes are on top of the head. Uh, that would be a, a type of scorpion or toadfish that, that lives there. Ooh, a tongue fish in the upper right-hand corner. They're flat. That's a tongue fish. They're real cool. A red-clawed hermit crab and a uh, horseshoe crab in the middle. The file fish, the file fish in the uh, right middle. Then you have a sea slug, lower left. A flounder, flounder, uh, a, a juvenile flounder in the lower middle. And a stone crab in the lower right. A boxfish called a cowfish in the upper left. Then you have a couple of greenies in the middle. Uh, that's the generic term for the silver bait fish. Uh, a pink shrimp in the upper right. Below that, you have a killifish. And of course, on the left, you have another hermit crab. These are from um, seagrass beds. They, they live in the seagrass, uh, pulling through with nets and taking pictures of uh, what we pull out. Uh, scallop on the scallop down below the scallop. You have a crown conch, below the crown conch, a juvenile puffer, top, middle, sunray venus, below the sunray venus, a banded tulip snail. Below that, you have two pipefish. Those pipefish are relatives of seahorses. So they live in the seagrass beds. Upper right, you have a lightning whelk. It's covered in um, algae. Below that, you have a living pear whelk. You can see its operculum and its, uh, the, the snail, its body sticking out. And then below that, the silver fish is a mohar or silver jenny. Another cool uh, lightning whelk up top. Below that, silver side, not a slopey forehead, silver side. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of curled over, so it might pass as an anchovy. I'd have to have it in my hand. I'm looking at a picture that's a little bit older. Uh, either way, glass minnow is a common term for them. Pinfish below that, very, very common. Uh, upper, upper center, we have a spider crab. They uh, have, they decorate their backs. Uh, below that, uh, sand dollar. Uh, below that, you have a flock of white pelicans, and we discussed them in the bird unit, white pelicans. Upper uh, right-hand corner, you are looking in the face of a tongue fish. Below that, a grass shrimp. Believe it or not, that is a grass shrimp. Very little, uh, they're well camouflaged as shrimp. Uh, you also have a very large, and, and the, you know, I mean, that Below that, that's three feet wide. You know, the picture doesn't really show it, but that is a stingray. He likes to swim around our grass flats from time to time, so you gotta keep your eyes peeled. He won't come after you, but shuffle when you walk through, shuffle. Uh, up close and personal, uh, you have on the left, you got yourself a sea slug. Upper center, uh, I see a little scallop in the, um, True tulip, it appears to be a true tulip. It could be a, a fig, it's covered up pretty bad, but, uh, and then uh, I see the claws of our red claw hermit crab kind of sticking out. Below that, you have yourself a tunicate growing on seagrass again. A lot of dolphins patrol that area. Don't be alarmed, oh, sorry. Uh, as I was going to say, don't be alarmed of the dolphins and the birds that, that we commonly see, the uh, osprey, the great egret in the center, the white ibis in the lower right, and of course, old Baldy himself. Uh, flying up high, you, 
have some frigate birds. Frigate birds are, they, they, they live offshore, they nest uh, offshore, but they, uh, they hunt. They hunt. Uh, I've seen one take in a two foot trout with a big gulp because they got a big pouch for a neck. And uh, below that, you have the roseate spoonbill. Another snowy egret up top and a crab spider, crab spider, a little, little uh, Egmont Key across, across the channel. That is the lighthouse at Egmont Key. You can take a ferry over Egmont Key. You can snorkel uh, because part of the fort's underwater there. Hard bottoms are very good. Things grow on it. A lot of fish. I've seen parrotfish. I've even seen barracuda out there. So that's a very productive area. Uh, a couple of uh, images that got away that uh, I re-included. -re uh, a student gave me the great horned owl that she took on one of our trips. And uh, so I thought that was a, just a brilliant picture and wanted to make sure that uh, I got it out there. Uh, below that, you also have the pelicans, of course, and the osprey. And we get the dragonflies from time to time. Uh, so those are uh, some pretty good shots. This is uh, the end of our little tour of the Arrowhead area. Uh, those are some sandwich turns. You can see the sandwich turn up uh, top, uh, hunting, and a least turn toward the center. Uh, that's the smallest of the turns, the least turn. So the sandwich turn up in uh, the upper left and the least turn in the center.